Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only, Steve Harvey. (laughs) Got a radio show. Man, oh man, oh man. You know what, y'all? I mean, really, the goodness of God is overwhelming if you think about it. I mean, really, really think about it. Even when your circumstance doesn't look so bright, even when you're going through something that's causing you discomfort, pain, even in that, God's goodness is actually overwhelming. Because don't forget why you're going through this moment. First of all, this too shall pass. But also, secondly, remember, man, ain't everything else that you've gone through that seemed so insurmountable at the time, didn't you get past that too? I mean, it's amazing if you really think about it. You don't get stuck on any one issue your whole life. The only people that get stuck on an issue their whole life is people who won't let it go. That's really all it is. There are people who exist, and you may be one of them. Oh, please know I've been guilty of it myself before. But I learned something. There are things in my past that I just would not let go of. It it was done. It was over with. I was past it. But I, I would not let go of it. It was over. The the dude that did it to me didn't exist no more. The problem that it created didn't exist no more. The only problem that kept hanging on was I would not let it go. And man, you can't go forward if you're going to keep looking in the past. It's an impossible thing. It's like driving a car. If you keep looking only in the rearview mirror while you're driving, you're going to crash pretty soon. And a lot of people just keep crashing over and over and over and over because you won't drive your car. You keep looking in the rearview mirror at the past. Oh, woe is me. Oh, you know, they did me like that. You know, I ain't been the same since he cheated on me. Oh, man, ever since she stole my money, I ain't been the same. Man, she played me, and ever since that, I done treated women differently. You may have some deeper stuff going on, like, but eventually, guess what? Do you understand that when you have a relationship God, with God, you can take that to him, too, and drop it off and leave it there? Do you know that he can fix and heal that? Maybe it's something serious like that that you need fixing or healing from. A relationship with God can fix and heal that. But man, 
Come on, y'all. Whatever it is, and I'm not trying to downplay it or make it act like it wasn't traumatic in your life. Cause oh God, you don't want to. You know, you don't want nobody to do that to you. Cause you want to be the, the, you know, the um, poster child for misery. So please don't let me take that from you. If that's your position, that's your Hall of Fame card you're hanging on to. I'm the poster child for misery. Oh, no one is more woe than me. Then uh, please don't let Steve try to take that from you. You go ahead and hang on to that. But let me tell you something. though. If that's what you're going to hang on to, that's what you're going to always be, the poster child for misery. At one point in time, you're going to have to get on and move past it. You Sometimes, man, it's merely a simple thing of taking it to God and leaving it there. You know, er, some people don't have money for therapy. Some people don't even know who to call for therapy. God is the best psychologist in the world. He can fix it for you. There is nothing too hard for God. You know, when something seems impossible, y'all, God does the impossible all the time, every day. You want to know how I know? I just look at a couple basic things. Do you know that that sun comes up every day in the morning? It comes up in the east and it sets in the west. You can't do nothing about that. Oh, you can you can wish because you planted your flowers on a certain side of your house. You can wish all you want that maybe one day he would bring it up out the northwest so those flowers would bl- No, no, it's going to come up out the east. And once the sun hits the horizon, when you look in the water, like if you're ever out in L.A. and you see the sun going down, once the sun, once you can visually see the sun touching the horizon, you have three minutes. You have exactly three minutes. You can sit there with your watch. You can time. You have three minutes, and it's gone. Three minutes, is gone. I read that somewhere, and then I went and tried it. It's gone. Every day, if, if it's clear enough, not cloudy, once the sun touches the horizon on water, you got three minutes. When the wind blows, you can't do nothing about it. He can bring it from the northeast. He can bring it from the west. He can bring it from the south. He can bring it hard. He can bring it cool. He can bring it hot. It's certain things that God do. God does the impossible all the time. How those stars sitting up there? How how can you find these constellations? The Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, Orion the Hunter. Oh, that's God. That's God. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You can't reach them stars. You can't shoot at them. You can't move them out the way. Orion the Hunter's belt is going to beat them three stars at an angle. You, you, can, you can call it what you want to call it. It's still, that's what it is. See, he does the impossible all the time. He created heaven and earth. You're saying that God can't get you through your past. Somebody did this to me. It's the worst thing. I had the worst childhood of anybody. God can't get you past that. He can move heaven, mountains, earth. He can form the Grand Canyon. He can make the water come over Niagara Falls 24-7. He can't fix your little bitty past, yours. It's amazing how people make their problems bigger than God. Somebody told me one time, stop telling God how big your problems are and start telling your problems how big God is. And go on with your life. Quit driving your car looking in the rearview mirror. Ain't nothing back there but your past. And if it was hurtful or painful or something you just felt like you can't get over Take your problems to God and leave them there. You hear the old spiritual, all you've heard it. Take your burdens to the Lord, leave them there. You hear it all the time. But you think that applies to everyone but you? Come on, man. There are a lot of people out there going through much worse than you have and have overcome it all. Why won't you take the step to overcome your past so you can get on with driving your car and see where God trying to take you? But it's a trick of the enemy. The enemy tricks you from seeing your future by having you constantly looking in your past. Man, it's a trick of the devil. If the devil just let you quit, if he would just let you get to driving your car and look out into your future, your future shows hopefulness. You, you have hope when you see the future. But he can keep you in misery if he keep you looking at your miserable past. God looking for you, man. God would love to hear from you. Let's spend some time talking to God today. Hey, God, what's happening? It's me. I know I ain't talked to you in a while, but and I feel bad about that, but I need you. He know that. Everybody should say that prayer all the time. It's cool. All right. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We got to get it together because this is the day. We got to get it together. We got to start the way. We got to Come get on. it together. We are here. We got to get it together. We don't Come have no fear. We got to get it together. We're going to do our thing. We're going to do our game. We're going to do our thing. We got to get it together. We're going to do our thing. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's do this thing. Steve Arm, I'm on the show on. about on radio. Hey, I'm on the show on the radio. I'm on the show on the radio. Come on, come Let's on, get come ready on. to do your thing. I always knew this fool. This fool, he'll just go with me. <laughs> I've never seen anybody encourage ignorance more than him. As soon as he hid, come on, come on. They're just with it, man. That's why you guys are friends. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Strawberry. Good morning, Steve. Mm, I don't know where that came from. I swear I don't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Carla Pharrell. That's your boy over there, Jay. Good morning, crew. <laughs> Here he comes, the youngest member, Kia Spates Jr. Everybody need a ride or die. Okay, what you do? <laughs> Go back like Cadillac seats, 1986 to be exact. Nick's. Bloomington, Indiana. I met the first black headliner ever in the history of comedy. I'd never seen him. It wasn't number three of them. It was him, George Wallace, and Byron Allen. That was it. There were no more blacks headlining comedy clubs in the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the three, J. Anthony Brown. We got to get it together. Come on. Yeah. (laughs) King of Prince, nephew Tommy. (laughs) Top, top. I'm in West Palm Beach, Dr. Steve. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Yes, sir. Do you know, man, that's real history? What? That in 1985, 86, there were three black headliners on the comedy circuit. That is history. Comedy. Yeah, that was history. Jay Anthony Brown was one of them. And then, uh, then Sinbad came along. And yeah, Sinbad was yeah, after yeah. that. Yeah, Sinbad, yeah, you're right. Dog, wow. It was Jay oh, Anthony wow. Brown. We, we never. It was, it, was, it was Byron Allen and George Wallace. That was it. When I saw George okay. Wallace at Hilarities, I went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. He just we, talked we about people. He came out and said, yeah, hey, look, I ain't like everybody else asking y'all how y'all doing. I don't give I a blame. Give <laughs> how y'all doing? <laughs> y'all paid to see me. <laughs> Ask me how I'm doing. Said, Boy, this dude right here. That was the first two minutes, huh? Dog, no, As that I was his opening up, line. He opened, he, opened, he opened up like that, man. Everybody out here talking about how y'all doing. I don't I give a blank. How y'all doing? If I ask y'all nothing, y'all paid to see me. I said, God, dog. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you for that trip down memory lane, comedy memory lane, Steve. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, ask the CLO right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building. Here we go. This one is from Rita in Alabama. And Rita says, my divorce was final three years ago, and I'm dating a 45-year-old guy I met on a blind date. He seems sweet, but some of the things he does makes him seem, makes him look stalkerish. He calls morning, noon, and night just to check on me. He asked a lot of questions about my ex-husband and said he was going to pay him a visit. I thought he was joking, but he really went to my husband's job to tell him I was his woman now. My ex-husband was laughing when he called to tell me this. He said, my man's a lunatic. Is he really? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Yes. I don't don't know what the going to the job for the announcement was. Right. Oh, you know. This my woman now. I'm gonna pay him a visit. Um, yeah. Now the call in morning, noon, and night. I don't know what y'all want. Y'all want a man that's attentive. Then when he give you the attention, that's right here. 
The strange part is calling your ex and going down to the job. Yeah. He could have walked dead up into that ass woman. But you know, <laughs> I don't know how. You don't play with people on their jobs. I, I was going to say, God. anytime you go to somebody's yeah. job, Steve, job? That, that's that's trouble right there. Yeah, I, so you. That, that's a different yeah. thing. But uh, stalkerish no may not be the word you're looking for. You could be looked for controlling. So I would be keep the red flag uh, monitor out and prepare yourself. Get out and Just now. pay close attention. <laughs> So she told him where her ex worked? How did he crazy. find that out? Yeah. Oh, well, you oh, know, man. when you call morning, noon, and night, it, that covers <laughs> yeah, a lot you getting of, information. Yeah. yeah. It covers a lot of information. Uh-huh. All those and All and right. look at the window now. See if he's out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> During that <laughs> early J. <jail. laughs> yeah, look right now. If his ass is in the bushes, you got a problem. <laughs> All right. This is from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mayana in uh, Charlotte as we move on. Mayana says, my son is 19 years old and his girlfriend is 18 years old. He asked if his girlfriend can move in with us since her dad has to take a job in another state. I'm a single mom and I can't watch them 24-7, but my mother said she'd be able to come over when I'm working. I also told the girl she'd have to sleep in my room because I don't want my son to give up his room. My son says, I'm overthinking it. Are they old enough to be left alone? <laughs> well, <Hell> no. <laughs> lady, lady, what? why do you think he asked you, can she move in? They they know what to do when they're alone. They done they been alone. It. What are you talking about? Are they old enough to be alone? They been alone. That's why she's trying to get her to move in. Your mama says she going to come over there when you at work. And do what? She going to go to sleep. <laughs> what are you talking about? Grandma going to take a nap. That's Grandma nap coming over sleepy. there to go to sleep. <laughs> look, I can't tell you what to do because, look, you can let people in your house if you want to. But your son and his girlfriend are in a full-blown relationship. And they're doing everything that anybody else does in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Now, and you talking about she going to have to sleep in your room and your son say you overthinking it. What 19-year-old boy can give me instructions? Mm. Yeah. Now. In my house. Now. <laughs> they tired yeah. of doing it in the car. They have been doing it. <laughs> All right, here All we day. go. Moving on. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Moving on. All right, Anne and so wait. So bad move to have her move in is what you're saying. She I mean, I'm not saying that. Uh-huh. Because you're considering it. But this foolishness about somebody going to be over here while I'm at work, for what? Mm-hmm. They 19 and 18. That's college age. They gonna, they should be gone anyway. Yeah. If they're in oh, the dormitory, can't nobody watch them? Oh, you That's saying too no old. babysitter, no baby. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah you can forget the babysitting thing because they're doing what they want to do. And your son going to be a daddy. Yeah. That's what so, Steve said. Yeah. 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 Your son going right. to be a daddy now. <laughs> All right. Any day now. <laughs> yeah. Moving yeah. on. Oh, wow. Ann in Minnesota writes, I'm a 53-year-old healthcare worker, and after work, I entertain wealthy clientele in a speakeasy. It's a new thing in my area, and the men come for cigars, scotch, and peace of mind. I serve drinks, compliments, back rubs, and whatever is requested. I do not go all the way with these guys, but I have been asked to for a nice sum of money. I question my morals all the time, but this job is so exciting. I'm sure some of the other hostesses here at work are doing a lot extra with these men. Should I try it once? Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're asking me, should you be a prostitute? Yeah. Basically. That's what what, your confirmation. Mm -hmm. If you sell your body for money, that's prostitution. That's what you're asking me. You can work at a speakeasy. It's a number of jobs you can work at and do extra on the side. We ain't got to get into that, but that's what that is. I'm not giving you my permission to do that. You know, you 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 do like you want to do. You already headed up that road, but you don't you you already there, lady. You done wrote a letter in to us. You gotta be kidding. She's considering it for sure. Mm. Yeah, you already up the road. I don't know. They're going to they gonna be doing a lot more than that. That's what you finna do, back rubs and whatever else. I don't go all the way. Well, how far have you went? <laughs> Just go do a little bit. That's all. Yeah, yeah you done went far enough where the money good. So. Who lived next door to all the way? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. It. Tina in Canada says, my mother is pregnant and we just found out it will be a boy. My stepfather wants a son and I want a little brother. But I also just found out that my mother and my biological father are still messing around. I overheard my dad talking to my uncle and he said he hopes the baby doesn't come out looking just like him. I can't believe my mother is a cheater. I've been questioning marriage lately. Is marriage so bad that you have to cheat? No, not at all. You just can't make babies. Birth control. There is such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't I don't know what to tell you. Everybody that's married doesn't cheat, period. I don't know what to tell you. Now, are there a lot of divorces? Yep. It's a lot of cheating, yep. It's a lot of great marriages, yep. You don't you don't there is no news story in the great marriage. Exactly, Steve. It's All right, only thank headlines you, when they break up. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Coming up next, the nephew with Run That Prank Back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in trending news, we're going to talk about the missing white woman syndrome. And we'll also talk about uh, and tell you about it. Yeah, yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing for sure. And it has been. We'll also tell you about a missing young black male grad student named Jelani Day. And some sad news out of Hollywood. Legendary actor, director Melvin Van Peoples has passed away. Oh, Our man. condolences, yeah, going out to his son, Mario Van Peoples, and the family. We'll discuss all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, the nephew is here to put a smile on your face with Run That Prank Back. What you got for us this morning, Neff? My auntie's bike. My auntie's bike. My my auntie ain't the only one got a bike. Y'all ain't got bikes too. My auntie's bike. (laughs) Let's go. They quit acting like my aunties can't ride bikes. Aunties can ride bikes if they want to ride bikes. Let's go. My auntie's bike. Here we go, cat. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach Vaughn. Yes, Vaughn. Hey man, this 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 K Dub man. Listen, do 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 you know somebody that live on? Yeah, my mama. My mama stay on. Hey, who is this? Hey, this this K Dub man, my auntie Miss Tinsley, she live on. Now my auntie say you uh came over here and stole a bicycle and some other stuff out of her garage. Okay, hold up. Uh, well, first of all, who is you, man? I, I stole a bike out of somebody's garage. Who, who is this? Who is K? I don't know no K Dub. This is this is K Dub man. My, my auntie uh Miss Tinsley live down the street from your mama. And my auntie just got you telling me you the one came over here and took a bike and, and a toolbox or something out of that garage. Man, first of all, I don't even know no damn Miss Tinsley. And second of all, I don't steal. Your, your auntie Miss Tinsley say I stole something out of her garage. I, I, put, put her on the phone, man. Put your auntie on the phone. I ain't stole nothing from nowhere. I ain't got to she steal. Can't, she can't talk. My auntie can't talk to you. Why she can't talk? She say I stole something. No, my aunt, my auntie Deaf. She sign language me and told me that you the one stole stole the bike. Your auntie deaf, and she told you, she sign language you, and said, I stole the bike. Hold on, wait just a minute. How you get my number? Hold on, wait, wait a minute, man. She number, sign language right? you me not. Hold on. What the f- Okay, she say, quit all that damn lying. You know damn well you the one that stole the bike. Hey, hey man, hold the f- up. So your auntie is cussing me out through you in sign language. That's the f- you telling me that I done stole the damn bike. Say, man, for, for, hey, first of all, how the hell you even get my number, man? I got your, I got I your number from some people that live down the street that say that I asked them for Miss, uh, ain't your mama Miss? Yeah, Miss, my mama. Okay, okay, well, you, look, man, the people down the street evidently knew your number. I told them I needed to talk to you soon as my auntie told me that, that you was the one that stole the bike out the garage. Now, look, I ain't trying to hey, have hey, no problem. Hey, I just hey, need hey, you to bring hey, the bike can you, can, 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 hey, man, all that. Can you sign language back to your auntie? Yeah, I can sign language back to her. Man, t- tell her that I said that I ain't stole no <laughs> bike. How about that? Tell your auntie I ain't stole no I'm damn bike. Right what now, man. Hold on. A grown man. I'm trying to tell her right now. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. She's saying something. She said your black <laughs> is lying, and you know damn well you got that bike. <laughs> man, look here, man. <laughs> you <laughs> your damn <laughs> ain't it? <laughs> that street on <laughs> with nobody on this street except for my mama. <laughs> I'm a grown <laughs> man. What the f- I gotta steal a bike for? No deaf. F- she she must be dumb too. She deaf and dumb. She think I stole something. Y'all don't, I, mean, I don't even know y'all. Who the f- are you? My auntie ain't deaf and dumb, dude. Okay, my, my auntie don't never lie. And if Miss Tinsley say that 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 somebody took something, that dog, she telling the truth. 
My auntie don't be lying. And just to be lying, why she just gonna lie on you? Why she gonna pick you out? Man, you know what? I, I don't know what the going on, but I ain't got no reason to steal no bike. Now I'm a gr I got a car that ain't paid for. I got, I'm a grown man. I'm trying to get custody of my son. So I'm gonna come in somebody's garage and steal a bike. Is you crazy? You crazy as she is, man. Get out of my line with that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My ain't to talk. I don't know what she's saying. Wait a minute, man. I'm trying to see what she's saying. She say that black know damn well he took that bike. And he better bring that damn bike oh, back. Okay. That's that uh, look at man, I don't know why the you still on my line, man. I ain't took no bike. The dumb ain't his line. Do he, do he see even hey, man, put, hey, right? hey dog, you let me tell you something. You gonna respect my ain't You hear me? Hey man, you gonna respect me. You call my phone with that I'm here trying to get my together. You call me some Hey Who are you? Who the are you? I don't know who this is. I don't know no I'm no K Dub, dub. man. I'm K Dub. Everybody know K Dub. I ain't never heard of no K Dub on in my life. My mama been staying on for 15 years. I ain't never heard of no K Dub. I ain't heard of no Miss Tinsley. I ain't heard about no deaf lady. I ain't seen no bike. Get the off my line, man. Hey man, see, see, you gonna make me go down and steal some out of Miss house if you don't bring that damn bike back. Oh, you got me. Bring somebody to my mama's house if you want to. I'm on my way over there. Bring somebody to my mama house. My family is going to be over for you. The deaf dumb ain't you got. Whoever the down there gave you my number. Everybody, you got me. We'll we blow this up. I'll blow that street up. You go by my mama house. You better not step in my mama grass. You come by my mama plant. I'm going to you up. You got me up. you going to turn me to the dark side. I'm on my way right now. I don't know why we still on the phone. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What you say? I ain't... I ain't say ain't nobody scared of your b Ow, that crazy Say, tell your deaf ain't he to bring her outside and I'll bet you she hear them licks I'm gonna be putting on your Yo, know, I'll beat your She gonna be undeaf today. I bet she get cured when she see me whooping your Hey, man, hey, hey, look, I ain't coming by myself, homie. Tommy gonna be there with me. Tommy gonna help me whoop your ass. Who the is Tommy? Tommy who? Tommy, man, nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> you just got pranked by your mama, Miss Vera. Ah, uh, that's that right there, man. Ah, uh, my mama, uh, my mama know I don't like nobody with him, man. God, uh, your you mama say, your mama say, reason. my son love me to death. He don't let nothing. He take care of me. He don't let nothing go wrong with me. Really? He don't let nobody mess with me. He said, all you got to do is act like you gonna do something to his mama. Oh man, well I hope she heard that. I hope she hear me cousin like I did, man. God, uh, I'm in the mirror sweating. I'm mad for real. <laughs> Y'all did this for me. I swear to God, I wasn't myself. On judge, man. Tell my mama she wrong for that too, dude. <laughs> what up, nephew? What up, baby? You 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 off the chain, boy. You off the chain. You just oh, like me, man. boy. You love your mama. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> hey, I gotta ask you, man. One more thing. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Man, without a doubt, man. It's the Steve Harvey <laughs> Morning Show, man. We'll be for you, Tommy, man. Without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, tell Miss Bureau I said, hey, all right. I, I go, I'm gonna, we're gonna go drop off that little two hundred dollars. She wanna, she wanna play games though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> might be on her now, bro. <laughs> 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 You better you what 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 what? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> man. You say hold on, she's saying something. She signed man. right. <laughs> that is my new favorite man. I didn't even know you could curse and sign language. You sign language. Language. You you curse and sign language. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, she's saying something. Yeah. Uh, Going West on. Palm Beach tonight, baby. Two shows. That nephew is in town. Two tonight, two tomorrow. Oh my God, I'm gonna be so doggone stupid. <laughs> oh my God! And I'm talking about geniusly stupid. You got to come see that's what it. He, that's what he do. That's what he do. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, coming up <laughs> at the top of the hour, we'll have some uh, trending news headlines right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys. Miss Ann is standing by with today's national news, and we are just heartbroken. And I mean heartbroken over the news that the authorities in Illinois have finally and now identified the body of missing black male graduate student Jelani Day. 
this news is heartbreaking. Um, it's so heartbreaking, and mm. this case did not garner the national attention. No, no. That you know, compared to Gabby, yeah. in yeah. it's just so sad. This is yeah, terrible. It really is sad. I, I really feel for his mom and his yes. family at mm. this moment. Um, Miss Ann is going to have all of the uh, national news. She'll have the details for us on the Jelani Day case. Mm -hmm. Um, Sad to wake up to this news, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Um, Miss Ann will also have the latest in the R. Kelly case. Um, But Carla, we're going to switch gears here and uh, do a little girl talk like we do. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Lighten things up. What you got? Yeah, Yeah. we we got to. Um, All right. In today's entertainment news, Megan Thee Stallion has gotten a new job. She's going to be a personal trainer. Um, (laughs) Okay, hot girl. She is the hot girl coach now. She took to the gram to uh, share her fitness story and to tell the world about her brand new gig. She wrote, hotties, we are officially Nike hotties. Okay. Uh, (laughs) As my mom used to say, Nikki. I don't know why she used to call that, but she used to say Nikki instead of Nike. But anyway, (laughs) mom, it's Nike. It's Nike. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, she says, I told you real hotties put their hotties on. So I'm sharing my fitness story to let you know sport is whatever you want it to be. Uh, Megan the Stallion goes on to say, dance is my sport. She says, rapping is my sport. Performing is my sport. I'm an athlete, and so are you. I love that. I love that. I love that. Radio is our sport, okay? (laughs) (laughs) And you got to be in shape to handle all this. You got to be in shape to Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So what do you have uh, in today's beauty news? (laughs) <laughs> okay, Shirley. So we've been talking about this in Girl Talk. We've mm-hmm. talked about this off air. So I'm going to bring it on air. Beauty trends are back. Eyebrows. Mm-hmm. So now they're saying that thick, bushy eyebrows are mm-hmm. out of style and thin eyebrows are coming back from the 90s. Remember we used to have yeah. thin oh, eyebrows? Yeah. yeah, in the <laughs> 90s. And so they're saying if you can't grow out your eyebrows or if you don't want to get them thicker and bushier mm. don't worry about it <laughs> thin well, eyebrows are back girl <laughs> well, let me just say this i don't Go care ahead. because i just got my eyebrows microbladed the hell i went through uh, <laughs> the pain i went through <laughs> my eyebrows are going to be whatever i want them to be and right now they're bushy and thick okay <laughs> Okay, so Shirley Strawberry is not worried about your thin eyebrow trend, beauty trend, okay? Do you, boo. I'm doing me. I'm kind of in between, but my eyebrows are thin, so Uh I'm kind of like not really mad at this new beauty trend. (laughs) So what other... 90s beauty trend you think is going to come back lip liner girl let's yeah. go <laughs> yeah i love lip liner i yeah. do i do yeah and um you know that's what? it uh, that's it for me on beauty trends and girl talk <laughs> this morning we got to get serious in a second what you got? yeah thanks a lot carla because my i went through a lot of pain for that i didn't need to, <laughs> i didn't need to hear that but anyway uh it is time to switch gears again and and uh, get to today's headline steve ladies and gentlemen miss ann tripp Thank you very much, everybody. Here we go. You know, while we all know the search for continues for Brian Laundrie and Gabby Petito's boyfriend, you know, we know that. There is sad news to report about the black Illinois State University graduate student, Jelani Day. The coroner in Bloomington, Illinois, now says that the body found earlier this month a floating in the Illinois River apparently was his. The 25-year-old aspiring doctor reported missing by his family back in August 25th. They heard nothing from the authorities. And in recent days, his mother pleaded for help in finding her son. Understanding, of course, the search for Gabby, but still wondering why authorities seem to care next to nothing about finding her child. Even Jelani Day's fraternity, Omega Sci Fi, put out the call for information. And with all the national interest in the whereabouts of Ms. Petito, now it turns out authorities had Jelani's body since September Fourth, And people in the community want to know why it seems local authorities weren't all that hard-pressed to identify it. As of this late date, the Bloomington PD has not announced a cause of death or determination as to whether it was a homicide. The FBI is supposedly involved, but CNN says the agency has not responded to their request for comment on how this case was handled. All of us on the Steve Harvey Morning Show, of course, express our condolences to the family of Jelani Day. 
Thousands of migrants, mostly Haitians, still camped out under that bridge in Del Rio, Texas, but many fewer than there were. The White House, meanwhile, using the word horrific to describe the pictures and videos of Customs and Border Control agents on horseback confronting and herding migrants like cattle. White House spokesperson Jen Psaki says the president said that kind of stuff is over. The secretary also conveyed to civil rights leaders that we would no longer be using horses in Del Rio. Uh, So that is something, a policy change that has been made in response. And she says the Department of Homeland Security is investigating how border controls been handled in general in Del Rio. Today's the day Republicans in Arizona released the findings of their audit of the 2020 election, an audit that cost millions of dollars and went on for months. According to several media organizations that have received early drafts, the GOP audit actually finds that Joe Biden won the election. Go figure. Things are wrapping up in R. Kelly's sex abuse trial, the big overarching charge, trafficking, which means the government's trying to prove that the singer and composer has also been the head of a criminal enterprise, including alleged kidnapping, forced labor, and the sexual exploitation of children. Finally, it's been a real sad week in the entertainment world. First, we lost comedian and actor Anthony Johnson. He was 55. LaBelle singer Sarah Dash, who was 76. Finally, the so-called godfather of the modern black cinema, Melvin Van Peebles, who was 89. His son Mario spoke about him. I said, Dad, how'd you get to the top? He said, they didn't let me in at the bottom. Now, what that meant was he understood show business was a business. So he took his money. He started making his own independent films. He built up a little cachet so he he could do his own thing. So I got to see early on. And that's what he did, his own thing. God bless him. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it is time to introduce your friends so we can see what's in there. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to Anthony Brown. What up, everybody? What up, what up? It goes down October 21. My daughter gets married. I'll be there to give her away. And then October 22 and 23, I'll be at the Atlanta Comedy Theater. One hour and a half, just me doing the damn thing. Now, a lot of people are wondering, Uh what is Jay doing on his off days? Well, I'm starting companies. I'm doing things. I'm making moves. I got a brand new company. You might want to get some of this because it's open. You guys want to invest in it? It's called the Ponytail Protection Service. It's the Ponytail. (laughs) The Ponytail Protection (laughs) Service. Yes. PPS. So if your ponytail gets stepped on, chewed up, caught in the door, set on, (laughs) caught in a bicycle spoke in a windmill, a ceiling fan, window fan, motorcycle, merry-go-round, Ferris wheel, roulette wheel, roller blades, bingo wheel, revolving door, elevator, or cat snatches it, uh, or sucked up in a meat grinder, the ponytail protection service is there to help you. The ponytail protection. Our 24-hour... Our, our 24-hour ponytail protection assistance will be there within 24 hours to give you a brand what? new ponytail, a brand new one. Oh. You look back, you okay. go, oh, my God, it's gone. Call us. <laughs> Call us up. We'll, we'll have a driver out to your place shortly. In but no don't time. just take my word for it. I got some satisfied customers right here. Oh. Dear Ponytail Protection Service, my ponytail was flying out of the top sunroof of my car, and it just went away. I don't know what happened to it. I called Ponytail Protection Service, and within 24 they hours, got I had a brand new ponytail. <laughs> but wait, there's more. There's Not more. more. <laughs> Dear Ponytail Protection Service, I was flying a kite. I was flying a kite with my ponytail, and the kite just took it away. I was flying a kite with my ponytail, and the kite just took my ponytail away. I called Ponytail Protection Service, and within 24 hours, I had a brand new ponytail. Ponytail Protection Service. We help everybody. We offer protections for ponytails, man buns, and whatever that is Jay-Z has on the top of his head. Call us up. Ponytail (laughs) Protection Service. We're here to help you. Wow. I have short hair, Jay, but if I had a... If I had a ponytail, I would certainly call. Yeah, we both have short hair. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if we Thank were rocking you, one. Yes. Thank you, Jay, for that. Anytime. Brilliant. Anytime. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's your friend, Steve. 
coming up. <laughs> Blue cheese, you're trending. We'll talk about it <laughs> at 34 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, they call them blue cheese. And uh, blue cheese, we got to tell you, you're trending again. And this time, we're talking about your blue denim suit that you rocked on your Facebook talk show, Facebook Watch. A lot of people, Steve, really, really like it. But, of course, you know, there are a few haters out there. Um, we loved it, though. It was cool. Always hate. Mm-hmm. It was nice. I like it. Mm-hmm. We, we, we don't even need to bring up the haters. That, that's mm-hmm. the thing. Yeah. They there. I don't. I love this, Steve. Damn, this will, this, I, I want that reaction to it. Yes. I, I don't I give for. a damn about no hate. Come on, come on, blue cheese. <laughs> what tell them. do you matter? <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> I've been stopped giving haters a platform, yes. leverage, identity, and anything. I don't know who you are. I don't even pay no attention to you. Right. I only focus on positivity in my life. Nice. And man, if Love anything, it. anybody said anything nice about me, thank you. I appreciate it, you know. Mm-hmm. But hey, for haters, I don't even know why y'all, I don't even know why y'all waste y'all time. Y'all, hey, man, let me, let me tell you something. Y'all can stop talking about me because you're wasting your damn time. I don't care. <laughs> I <laughs> clearly okay. don't give a damn. <laughs> Look at me. I'm just as happy as I was a minute ago before I heard you was out there. Hey, Steve, was there, was there a time that you did care? And yeah. what happened to make you change? Yeah. Well, you know, I just I, I just finally had to come to the realization mm-hmm. that they don't matter. When I looked at... You cared what I, people thought. i tell you thought. what. It, it, yeah, 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 yeah. A lawyer named Tony Mulrain, I think that's his last name. Something was happening in my life, and uh, we had to get him. And he told me something very important. We were just struggling with this stuff. And he said, uh, Tony said to uh, us, he said, let me ask you something, man. Do you blog? I said, no, 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 no. He said, do any of your business associates blog? I said, no, 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 no. He said, do any of your well-off friends blog? I said, no. He said, do any of your friends blog? who are not well off, but are trying to be well off. Do they blog? I said, no. He said, exactly. He said, people who matter don't do that. Mm. He said, so why are you worried about it? Now, I'm not saying bloggers don't work, because, you know, bloggers, like, you got a fashion right. blog yeah, or something right, like that. Right, I'm yeah, not right. talking about that. Influencers and all right, that. Right, right, right. That's, that's different. I'm you talking about if you just a trolls. hater. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you're a troll. Matters. Name me one troll that matters <laughs> and can move the needle in your life in any direction unless you let it. I said, there are none. He said, exactly. Why are we talking about them? Mm-hmm. And, and then I started getting better and better and better at it to now where I'm just you like. give less. No, nah, man. I wore a blue jean suit. I told, look, my stylist said to me, Mr. Harvey, you don't have any jeans. Because I had some jeans while I was in Chicago, right? Uh-huh. And I decided to try jeans. But I'm just uh-huh. not a jean dude. I'm just right. really not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I nice. said, uh, I said, can we make a, a denim suit? He said, of course. Mm-hmm. So we called the people up. And they got my measurements. I said, this is what I want. But I want the shirt, everything. They said, okay. Because on Facebook Watch, they say, we want you to wear what you would wear. If you want a television host, cool. Okay. Things you're Let's comfortable go. in. Yeah. 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 So, Chill on. Yeah. Colors is back. You know, <laughs> yes. stuff like that. You know. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, pimp back, man. <laughs> Blue uh, cheese. Uh, 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 I've seen your closet. Uh, if they mad about this denim suit, wait till they see the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Man. You hate not. <laughs> Let yeah. the hate be Boy, good. Yeah. I've been in there. <laughs> and see, for those of, of for, for those people that don't know, why do they call you blue cheese? Because I be dressing. <laughs> <laughs> see, right there. But let me ask you something. Shirley, did you like it? Yeah, I did actually like the blue denim suit. Carla. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I put blue Mississippi. emojis, hearts, all that. I loved it. She gives you That's it. Giving you the I ain't even asked Tommy J and Kim. 
Because you don't care, you care about, about the lane. <laughs> I don't give a damn. <laughs> All right, coming up next, we're going to switch gears. The nephew is here with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm. Ooh, we'll find out what that's all about in just a little bit. But right now, it is time for the nephew with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? Well, before I give it to you, Shirley, you know, we were talking about my uncle's denim suit on the last break. Mm-hmm. I just want to ask, and he can answer it after the prank is over. How many denims did you kill to get that suit? I just wanted to know that. <laughs> just, How many what? That's a lot of denim you had. How many? That's a lot of denims you, you had to kill. That's a to lot make that of denims. Mm-hmm. Did you go out I and just, shoot them? Or how did you get out of <laughs> these denims? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The prank. <laughs> Sex is see, too loud. See, see, ladies. Uh-huh. See, ladies. Yes, sir. That's why I didn't say nothing to you. I them. know. That's yeah, why know. you didn't ask You see them. why? Uh-huh. You, you, you kill about eight denims now. Just, I mean, that's a lot of Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got trolls on this show. Young. Uh-huh. Those uh-huh. look like young denims, too, you had them. Those are young <laughs> denims. Too. We said there were a few haters out there. We did uh-huh. say that. Trolls them was, them was baby denims. <laughs> we baby didn't know they were you on this show. You ought to be ashamed show. of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> you about to kill them mm. denims like right that. Mm. Wow, I'm shocked. Mm. All right, Neff. Uh, Back to you. What you got? All right, Tom. Sexist. So, yeah, I'm, st- I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, let me hear. When you get dressed, <laughs> how many children had to give up their Easter outfit? <laughs> Not funny. That's, that's <laughs> the clap back is real. <laughs> Two way street with the troll. It is. <laughs> Listen to it Team is. Tommy, though. Jade's mad. Jade did some of this too now, Jade. Ain't that's not hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the hate. Here comes the hate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Sex is too loud. Sex is too loud. Let's go, cat dog. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to read uh, Cedric. Cedric. Uh, you have the wrong number. This is his wife, though. Can I help you? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm calling you from the front desk here at the uh, at the Hilton Hotel, and I've called the. The room a few times and you guys you guys haven't answered so we actually uh went a little further and got the number that's connected with the credit card and uh you know i, I wouldn't be calling your number like this but the people are complaining about you guys on the floor that you guys are staying on and they're saying that the uh, sex is too the sex is too loud coming from I'm you all sorry? The room. wait wait a minute what'd you say the people on you all's floor are saying that the sex is too loud coming from you and your husband's room? Wait, what the f*** is going on here? I am at home, and that mother f- is out of town. So what are you saying to me? Uh, can, can, I, can I get you to hold on for a second? Sure. Some that's, bull that's his, that's his, This is his wife on the phone right now. But she said she's at home. That's what she's telling me. She's telling me she's at home. But she's not upstairs. No, she's not upstairs. Evidently in a different city. What am I supposed to say to her? Okay, okay. Uh, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. What's your name again? Dominique. Okay, Dominique. Uh, look, you know what? We won't worry about it. We'll, we'll fix it. What, do, what uh, the f- do you mean? Don't worry about it. You just called me to tell me that basically my husband is having sex with someone. At the hotel, and now you're acting like I'm just supposed to act like this shit didn't happen? Hello? Yeah, yeah. And I did hear you talking in the background. You heard who? I heard you. Okay, hold, hold on. Hold on. Can you hold on again, please? And, uh, where are you at? Which shit is this? Which hotel is this? Look, just hold, hold, hold on for a second, man. I didn't hit the mute button. I didn't hit the hold button. No, she heard everything we was talking about. I don't know. What am I supposed to say to him? The guy won't answer the phone, and it's noise coming from the room all day. All right. Hello? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dominique, Miss uh, Ms. Dominique, I want to apologize. We thought we were calling. Uh, the apology that is not going to do it. I can solve the problem for you. What's your address? Tell me your address. Uh, uh 
I'm, I'm not at liberty to, to give that information. This is some bull, some real bull. Let, can you put your manager on the phone or something? Um, I mean, my manager is actually in a meeting right now. I don't. Ms. Dominique, Ms. Dominique, I just want to say I, I, I just, I, I truly apologize. I, I mean, I thought I was calling the person that was in the room. I'm, I'm really, really. You know sorry. what? I don't know what to say. There is nothing to say unless you're going to give me your address right now, so I could be on my way over there. Uh, what city are you in? Don't worry about where I'm at. I can get to you and his. Ass. You know what? I'm going to call this mother myself, and he better. Wait, 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 my wait. Call. Oh, what, okay, wait a minute. I can though. solve this... your whole situation. Okay, but I'm calling on, his. Ass. Right now. Okay, but will you wait? Because you're going to mess around. I'm going to lose my job. If I don't give goes... a f about your job right now. Bro, you told me that my husband is f some other b in your hotel. Do you think I care? So what's your address so I can be on my way? Okay, okay, okay. My, 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 Actually, my... let me just call him. No, 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 no. My, my manager, my manager coming now. My manager. Oh, coming. now your manager is available. How convenient. Okay. So my I manager don't... talk. I don't want to talk to your manager. Okay. I thought you wanted to talk to the manager. I'm f pissed off right now. So either you're going to give me your f address. Can I put, this is my manager, Tommy. Can I put Tommy on the phone? Sure. Hey, Dominique. Yes. This is Tommy. Okay, Tommy. What's going on? Uh, your f worker called me to tell me that my husband was having sex in your hotel too loud. And I asked him his address, and he won't give it to me. And I'm on my way down there, and I'm about to call my husband since he won't answer your call. And I did hear him talking to you in the background. Okay. Well, did you hear who he was talking to? No, I didn't. Okay. He was talking to me, but do you know who I am? No, I f***ing don't. And I don't really care. But do you know Tommy at all? Do I know Tommy? No. Do you know Tommy? No. Okay. Do you know nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show? Do you know Are him? you <laughs> kidding? You asshole. How dare you? That's uh, messed up, Tommy. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm not your friend right now, Tommy. And I don't like you anymore. I just want you to know uh, that. Oh, come on, Tommy, man. Come on. Come that on. ain't funny. <laughs> it's not funny, Tommy. It's really not. Okay. Funny. All right. I don't want to get off the phone and we're on bad terms now. We got to get back. We got to be on good terms when we get off the phone. Okay? Come on, mm. Dominique. Laugh, laugh with me, baby, please. Mm. Uh, well, I don't know if you'd be laughing if somebody called you with this. But okay. I would. Fine. I would. Yo, you have a sister. Your sister's name is Lydia. Am I right? Yes. Lydia is who got me to prank phone call you, baby. Oh, my. <laughs> Okay, it's it's really going down now. I got something for you and her. So let me see you in the streets, Tommy. Okay, let me ask you this, though. Before you go, at least give me this. What's the baddest radio show in the land? Come on, let me ask. You know, Steve Harvey and Nephew Tommy. You know what, Tommy? You used to be my favorite. But now, I'm rolling with Steve. You could kiss my ass. Oh, come on. <laughs> I love Dominique. <laughs> She's had it wow. with you, nephew. <laughs> I love Keep it stupid, baby. That was great. That the mute down, button man. was classic, Tommy. The mute button yeah. was classic. That was so <laughs> damn stupid. You that liked it, so Steve? You proud that of your nephew? That mute button was ignorant. Twice back. <laughs> man, I didn't hit the mute. I it didn't hit the whole <laughs> button. Everything I heard you. <laughs> you heard uh, who? <laughs> then I'm so uh, sorry. I didn't mean to Now, sorry. can you believe I'm going to be more stupid than this tonight? Can you even believe yeah. that? I can't yeah, believe yeah. it. Yeah. I yeah. believe it. That's what you well, do. I, be, I bear witness to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, Strawberry Letters. Subject, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air. Uh, <laughs>
That's for you, Jay. Just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. You never know. It could be yours. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. The strawberry letter. All right. Thank you, nephew. Um, Subject, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been with my boyfriend for five years. He's 30 years old and I'm 28. Since the pandemic hit, he's been drinking a lot. At first, it was out of boredom to pass the time, and I didn't mind it because it was just beer. Now he's drinking at least 30 beers a week, and our recycling bin stays full of beer cans each week. He swapped out his coffee and bagel for a beer before he heads to work. He needs it to jumpstart his day, as he says. Uh, He's gone back to work a lot under the influence, so I pray it doesn't get him fired because he's on probation and he has to keep a job. I asked his father to come talk to him, but they drank beer together during the conversation about him drinking too much. I am at the end of my rope with this man, and I gave him an ultimatum that I will not marry him if he can't control his drinking. If he's had a lot to drink, he snores very loudly, and I have to sleep on the couch. When he doesn't get enough sleep, he's drunk and cranky and picks fights over stupid things. I'm tired of avoiding him in our tired, tiny apartment. Uh, and his mom called him the other day, and she could tell he was drunk, and she went off on him. He started crying and said that everyone is against him, and it's too much pressure on him. He's almost had me fooled because he looked so defeated in that moment, but a few minutes after that, he was passed out drunk. His mom and I have considered talking to his probation officer about scaring him straight. The only thing about that is he'd either go back to jail or have to enroll in an outpatient treatment program. If he doesn't do something soon, he's going to lose me and his family is going to distance themselves. Is calling his probation officer a bit too extreme? Well, it might be at this point, but if you call, you got to get him into some kind of treatment program. That's what I'm saying, because it sounds like truly he's an alcoholic right now. That's what it sounds like. Um, He likes to drink, and he's been drinking a lot. Um, And he can't do this. He can't stop on his own, so you got to get him some kind of help. And I'm not talking about the kind of help his dad so-called gave him when he came over there to talk to him about stopping drinking, and they were drinking together at that moment. Uh, you got to get him in some kind of recovery program immediately. Hopefully, he'll agree to it. Um, it, He's doing too much. He's at work drunk. He's picking fights over stupid things. And how is he getting to work? I'm assuming he's driving, and we all know how bad that can be. That's very, very dangerous. But I would definitely sign him up for rehab before I contact his probation officer. Uh, We don't want him to go back to jail, uh, but he needs help right now, not punishment. All right, Steve? Boy, this letter got crazy. Yeah. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. You've been a boyfriend, had a boyfriend for five years. He's 30. You're 28. Well, the pandemic hit, and he started drinking a lot. And you say at first it was out of boredom to pass the time. So that must mean you were there. Were you having a couple of drinks yourself? I'm curious about that, or was it just him? I didn't mind it because it was just beer. Now he's drinking at least 30 beers a week. 30, what is that, about five? Five a day is 36. Yeah, about five, a little under five a day. But I think he's drinking more than that, though. Anyway... Uh, and our recycling bin stays full of beer cans each week. Swapped out his coffee and bagel for a beer before he go to work because he needs it to jumpstart his day, as he says. I didn't know beer was a jump starter. It is for him. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You, that's, that's an addiction. Yeah. That, that's, that's an addiction. Uh, he's gone to work a lot under the influence. Wait a minute. He's grown to work drunk? Okay, we have a problem. Shirley said it. This ain't no might be. If you go to work under the influence, dog, you got a problem. The pandemic that turned him into an alcoholic. 
And I pray it doesn't get him fired because he's on probation and he has to keep a job. Now, when you talked about probation right here, I thought he was on his probation period doing it for job. his job. Oh, the 90 it's days. what I thought. Mm-hmm. I asked his father to come talk to him, but they drank beer together during the conversation about him drinking too much. See, now you need somebody to come talk to his daddy. Right. Everybody, you got to have a conversation with this whole damn family. Because <laughs> daddy came over there. They drank while they was talking about him drinking too much. And him and the daddy just drunk. Too much. All right. And I would. So my, I'm at the end of my rope with this man. And I gave him an ultimatum that I will not marry him if he can't control his drinking. If he's had a lot to drink, he snores very loudly and have to sleep on the couch. When he doesn't get enough sleep, he's drunk and cranking and picks fights over stupid things. What? Lady, this, this, you want to marry this? Hmm. Whatever's happening before the marriage, when you get married, it amplifies. Ready? Okay. All right, uh, coming up at 23 minutes after the hour, part two of Steve's response to I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, 28-year-old lady, girl's got this 30-year-old boyfriend for five years. I done told y'all about these boyfriends after you leave college. I done told y'all, 30 and 25 boyfriend, okay. Anyway, uh, during the pandemic, was started drinking. You thought it was just out of boredom to pass the time, but during the pandemic gave us a lot of time, though. So he just drank his ass to death. Now he drinking at least 30 beers a week and recycling beer and stay full of beer cans. Swapped out his coffee and bagel for a beer before he had to work because he needs to jumpstart his day. I didn't know beer was a jump starter, but alcohol is a jump starter to get your day off if you're an alcoholic. He's gone to work under the influence, so I pray it doesn't get him fired because he's on probation. He has to keep a job. Once again, I thought that was because he was on a probationary period doing a job, but I found out later on he's on probation, period. The court. I asked his father to come talk to him, but they drank beer together doing the conversation about him drinking too much. Like I said before, now you need somebody to come talk to the daddy. Uh (laughs) I'm at the end of the road with this man. I gave him an ultimatum that I won't marry him unless he controls his drinking. He's had a lot to drink. He snores loud. And when he's not, and when he doesn't get enough sleep, he's drunk and cranky, and he fights over stupid things. Lady, you're marrying a guy on probation that has a drinking problem that snores when he get drunk, and when he awake, he pick fights. I'm tired of avoiding him in our tiny apartment. How do you do that? <laughs> I've lived in an apartment with a person I tried to avoid. It's damn near impossible. Yeah. The only thing I used to do was just sit and look at the wall. I would just take a chair and just turn it in the corner and just look at the wall, act like I was reading. I was doing anything, man. I just look at the wall, just in the corner. I put myself in time out, just sit in the corner, just look at the damn wall, try to ignore this. Oh, I've been there, lady. Oh, you got to, you finna kill yourself. It's hard to avoid somebody in a tiny ass apartment. Hard apartment one. That apartment was 600 square feet. I couldn't go nowhere. No way, and that wasn't even and, the first one. The when, first one I you had. Hate was the person in there is smaller. It gets oh smaller. God! Oh God! Because hate like looks at you coming in all the time. Anyway, uh, <laughs> his mom called him the other day, and she could tell he was drunk. So then she went off on him. Now here we go. He started crying and said that everybody's against him and there's too much pressure on him. Wait a minute. Everybody's against you. You talking about these people trying to help you? Mm. And wait a minute, what pressure's on you? This called life, boy. So this is on all of us. <laughs> this thing <laughs> called life, this thing called pressure, it's on all of us. You're not the only one. 
He almost had me fooled because he looked so defeated in that moment. But a few minutes after that, he was passed out drunk. Well, that's how he fix it. Guess I go and get drunk, get out of this pressure. His mom and I have considered taking, talking to his probation officer about scaring him straight. The only thing about that is he'd either go back to jail or have to enroll in an outpatient treatment program. If he doesn't do something soon, he's going to lose me and his family. Is going to distance himself. It's calling the probationary officer too, too extreme. I'm going to tell you this. Don't call that probation officer because he's not going to play the game with y'all. You call the PO, you create a whole nother problem because all they're going to do is violate the dude. All they're going to do is violate, he's going back to jail. Now I'm assuming that he's gone to jail before for something to do with drinking or drugs because he'll either go back to jail or have to enroll in an outpatient treatment program. So I don't know if he sold dope. I don't know if he was using. I don't know what he got arrested for. But do not call the P.O. because if you call the P.O., they're not going to act right. They're not finna play no games with you. You're going to keep your man in the system, and then he has he has no chance of winning. You all have got to do some type of intervention. You've got to sit him down and tell him what he means to you. You've got to do an intervention. Your mom, you, his sister, get his daddy, and y'all got to sit down, and you got to explain it to him. And that's it. That's your only chance. But do not call the parole officer. Because you are introducing a system that already ain't fair. Now you done call the un- what do you think? What game you think the PO finna play? He part of the system. That's some good POs out there now that really try to help people get back on the straight and narrow and cut them slack and everything. I don't know which one you got. I don't know. I feel so badly here. But he got to stop drinking before he go to work. Because if he lose his job, he going to be in a world of trouble. But do not call the parole officer. I'm sorry. I wouldn't do that. He drinking his ass off. Right. You don't want coffee and a bagel. You'd rather have a beer. I'm not really a bagel eater, but I'd rather have a bagel than a beer, though. <laughs> All right, post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand coming up at 46 minutes after. It's Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, Junior is here with Sports Talk. Junior, what you got? All right, NFL Week 3. I need Pippin. <laughs> right here, baby, right here. Hey, what's up, ladies? Hey, How y'all Pippin. doing? What's up, Chocolate? You what's good? going on? I'm good. Hey, what's up, Strawberry? Hey, Pimpin. What's up, Mississippi? I see you over there with that bond on top of your head. Like cute little <laughs> thing right there. I'll let you boy. <laughs> All right, let's get some players. <laughs> Here we go, Pimpin. Indianapolis at Tennessee. Oh, man. I'm going to have to go with Tennessee, man. They made a comeback. Indianapolis ain't got no quarterback. Go ahead. <laughs> Atlanta at New York Giants. Atlanta. Ugh. <laughs> you struggle with that upset Atlanta and I know not to do this I know not to Los pick Angeles the damn Chargers at Kansas City oh man I'm telling you something did Kansas City lose last week oh they did yes, they, they did. did they, did. they, they did. lost the ball they ain't gonna lose two in a row pimp <laughs> Kansas City alright Cincinnati at Pittsburgh I don't care. <laughs> they don't both <laughs> equally. You know what I'm saying? It don't make you no know, difference. I can't even pick a win. They're the same division as the Browns. I can't pick that. Okay, Chicago. Uh, whoever, at win, whoever win, I win. What did you say? <laughs> Chicago at Cleveland. Come on, Pimp Browns. <laughs> Baltimore at Detroit. <laughs> Oh, Baltimore, man. They can't. They ain't Detroit ain't ready yet this year. Yeah, New Orleans at New England. Oh, man, New England finna do them, Jack, because they something didn't happen down there in New Orleans. Oh, oh man. Yeah, and okay. I love New Orleans, but I can't really, you know, I've got to pick what's I what's love the up? Saints, man, but damn. Well, you know what, though? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm going to go with the Saints, man. Yeah. Come Saints. on, Jameson. Yeah. All right, Arizona at Jacksonville. 
Oh, Arizona, baby, Kyle and Mary all day long. You know what I'm saying? Come, come on, Washington dude. football team at Buffalo. Oh, that's going to be ugly, man. Buffalo, Buffalo, yeah. even though I want to pick Washington, but they ain't got no quarterback. New York Jets at Denver. Oh, and Denver finna walk, in, finna walk the ass. Miami at Las Vegas. <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders, baby. They ain't <laughs> nothing with these boys right here. Takua Lua man. out anyway, whatever the name is. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle at Minnesota. Oh, Seattle, baby. Come on Seattle. back. Okay. Tampa Bay at Los Angeles Rams, man. I have the surprise upset game of the week. The Rams is going to beat Tampa Bay. Okay. That's upset. Okay. <laughs> upset alert. All right. <laughs> Green Bay at San Francisco. Oh, San Francisco finna walk them. Okay, and Monday night, Philly at Dallas. Oh, another game, but we gonna have to, oh, Jalen Hurt, let's go Philly. Philly, there it is. Even the though ain't a better people. team than the Cowboys this year. <laughs> All right, thank you, Junior. Thank you, Pimpin. So will. See you, Coming Shirley. up at I'm the top sorry. of the hour, Bye, Jay Anthony Bye, Brown's Sippy. comedy roulette right after See this. See you, Pimps. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for Comedy Roulette. J. Anthony Brown, please explain. Here's how it go. All right, what we do is we take three subjects, we put those three subjects on a wheel, we spun the wheel, where it stop, watch us make it funny, because that's what we do. <laughs> that's the setup right there. Here we go with <laughs> today's categories. Right <laughs> Uh, things a vegan might say to make you think what they're eating is delicious. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here's another one. Ways to convince the police. That's not weed smoke they smell. Uh-uh. 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 <laughs> and then here we, uh, this last one. Reasons people use to not go back to church. Reasons people use to not go back to church. <laughs> you don't do it. Spun it, spun it, spun it. Let's see what we got. We got. It's not we. It's not we. It's not we. Oh, it's not no. good. <laughs> yeah. The things a vegan might say to make you think what they're eating is delicious. Comedy roulette, things a vegan might say to make you think what they're eating is delicious. Have you tried the Jello okra? Oh my God, it is so delicious. Oh, it is the what? best. You, <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. No, I haven't tried that. <laughs> things a vegan might say to make you think what they're eating is delicious. Listen, ever since I've been eating vegan, I ain't lost no weight, but I sleep way better though. Way better. <laughs> well, you need to try this. <laughs> <laughs> Things a vegan might say to make you think what they're eating is delicious. Man, you got to try the black and truffle spinach. It is to die for, boy. Woo! What? Let me tell you about this black and truffle spinach. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Read it for me, Shirley. All right, it's things a vegan might say to make you think what you're eating is delicious, Steve. Mm-mm. Oh my God! Is this ham? Didn't hear well that it tastes like no damn ham. <laughs> the hell you uh, eating? That? <laughs> oh my God! Is this? Oh ham? my God! Is this ham? <laughs> no, <laughs> hell no, that ain't ham. Hell no. <laughs> ham? It don't no. even slice like ham. It's, yeah. uh, look how it's falling yeah. apart. That is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things a vegan might say to make you think what they're eating is delicious. Dog, until you tried the sesame seed chicken, you ain't never had chicken, man. I'm talking about for real. This is a bomb. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) I'm going to piggyback that right there, Jay. (laughs) Things a vegan might say to make you think what they eat is delicious. Listen, man, I know you love chicken. But what's better than chicken is what chickens eat. I'm telling you, if you eat that, boy, 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 Uh, what? Come on, come on. Things a vegan might say to make you think what they're eating is delicious. Man, let me tell you something. You got to try the impossible pork chop flavored watermelon. Boy, that thing go hard. The impossible 
pork chop flavored watermelon. Good God of my. No, thank you. Good God of my. <laughs> it is things a vegan might say to make you think what they're eating is delicious, Steve. Oh, my God. Have you had huh. a corn sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Oh, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> I like mine with nail. Ah, uh, yeah, I like it. Oh my uh, god! My favorite. Then you can make say. Yeah. Oh my a god! Corn sandwich. I just shot a corn. <laughs> That's hard to follow. That's hard to follow. I okay, know. all right, here we go. Yeah. All right, things the vegan might say to make you think what eating. Dude, have you tried to beat? Ice cream. Oh my <laughs> goodness. It is it is delicious. Uh, we gotta go. ice cream. <laughs> and I got a bar right now. More of today's trending stories. <laughs> and more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, one lucky person won 490 Mega Millions lottery jackpot. Ooh, yeah. Wow. That's right. Mm-hmm. 490? One person. Oh yep. God. 490. The lucky ticket was Ooh. sold at a pizzeria in Manhattan. The jackpot will be about 315 million as a cash lump sum, which will be. Uh huh. Oh, I'm out. Well, oh, wait, no. wait. You still got to pay your taxes, though. You still got to okay, pay your okay. taxes. Shirley. Huh? They have 50%. <laughs> You get mad. <laughs> I know, whatever. Just give me 150. I'll walk. I don't care. Give me 30. 50 million, I'll walk. You're gonna get 192 million after taxes. But when what? I go, when I go down there, no, I'm no. gonna take my whoa, number. Whoa, 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 Shirley. You get yeah. how much is the payout? Three what? The pay the payout is 315. That's a cash lump sum. And then mm. it's gonna be about 192 million after taxes. Mm. Okay. You doing the you, math? You mad what at you that? Doing? What? What you say, Tommy? So we still got a hundred. And when I go pick up, when I go down there and show them I got the ticket, one hundred twenty-three me. Why would you got a hundred? Do it matter? You got, you got to pay, you're gonna have to pay forty percent to the feds, and then you got to pay your state taxes. I'm telling you, fifty percent. You don't need half the money. I don't care. Yeah, who cares? What is the math yeah. for? What is the math yeah. for? Yeah. Who, All right. Who is winning? The person going, that's not enough. That is not enough. Y'all robbing me. Who is that fool? Hey, dog. <laughs> dog. In three years, majority of these people be broke. Yeah, that's oh. the sad part. All right, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 33 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building. Here we go. This one is from Rita in Alabama. And Rita says, my divorce was final three years ago, and I'm dating a 45-year-old guy I met on a blind date. He seems sweet, but some of the things he does makes him seem, makes him look stalkerish. He calls morning, noon, and night just to check on me. He asked a lot of questions about my ex-husband and said he was going to pay him a visit. What? I thought he was joking, but he really went to my husband's job to tell him I was his woman now. My ex-husband was laughing when he called to tell me this. He said my man's a lunatic. Is he really? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Yes. I don't I don't know what the going to the job for the announcement was. Right. Now, the call in morning, noon, and night, I don't know what y'all want. Y'all want a man that's attentive, then when he give you the attention, that's right here. The strange part is calling your ex and going down to the job. Yeah. He could have walked dead up into that air room. But, you know, <laughs> I don't know how. You don't play with people on their job. No, I was going to say, don't. anytime you go to somebody's yeah. job, Steve, job? That, that's that's trouble right there. Yeah, I, so you that, that's a different yeah. thing, but... Um, the word you're looking for, controlling. Keep the red flag uh, monitor out and prepare yourself. Get out. Just now. pay close attention. <laughs> so she told him where her ex worked? Yeah. How did he find crazy. that out? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, when you call morning, noon, and night, you, that covers <laughs> a lot of information. You getting information. Yeah. 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 It covers a lot of information. Uh, all those and and all right. look at the window now. See if he's out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> During that That's early J. Yeah, look right now. His ass is in the bushes. You got a problem. 
<laughs> All right. This is from uh, <laughs> Mayana in uh, Charlotte as we move on. Mayana says, my son is 19 years old and his girlfriend is 18 years old. He asked if his girlfriend can move in with us since her dad has to take a job in another state. I'm a single mom and I can't watch them 24-7, but my mother said she'd be able to come over when I'm working. I also told the girl she'd have to sleep in my room because I don't want my son to give up his room. My son says I'm overthinking it. Are they old enough to be left alone? (laughs) Well, no. Why do you think he asked you can she move in? They they know what to do when they're alone. They done been alone. What are you talking about? Are they old enough to be alone? They've been alone. That's why she's trying to get her to move in. Your mama says she going to come over there when you at work. And do what? She going to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coming up, it is our last break of the day. It is the last break of the day. <laughs> we'll also have some closing remarks. From Steve Harvey. Go ahead, <laughs> right no, after this. No. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, guys, on this Friday with our last break of the day and of the week. It's, it's been a been good some day. Kind of weird, yeah, and some kind of crazy week. Yes, it has. Man, yeah. Heavy, yeah. heavy week. Crazy yeah. come all night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Sure. Yep. That border, man. That border's crazy. Oh. Horrible. And we're, we're living in crazy too. times. I mean, the Democrats, too, that's crazy. What the Democrats are not doing is crazy, too, yeah. man. Well, they Agreed. don't stick together. That's Well, oh, no. you know, the they politics don't. in this country is absolutely horrible. We just have yes. to vote and just get them. Get, it's, it doesn't make any sense. We just have to vote, y'all. I'm going to keep mm-hmm. pushing that. Hey, listen, these are my closing remarks today. I want to remind you all of something that I have to remind myself of quite often. And it is this. God has planned for your life something great. God has planned for your life some goodness. One of the key signs to know that God still has goodness for you is that he wakes you up in the morning. The moment your journey is over, your mission has been accomplished or you've reached the end, you won't wake up anymore. But as long as you do, that means he has more for you. See, God has incredible destinies planned for us all. It's just that he has given us the power of decision that allows us to reach the destiny, to flourish in the destiny, or to ignore the destiny. So what I want to talk to you about today is knowing and understanding that God has a great destiny for you. I want to, I want you all to do something. Stop hanging around people that's blocking your destiny. I am telling you, man, it is one of the biggest causes of us not reaching our potential and not being who God created us to be. Stop hanging around people that's blocking your destiny. First of all, let me help you with understand something. Friendships get outgrown. You can outgrow a friendship. And all of us have done it. You've had people that you were friends when you were younger, and you just can't be their friends anymore because you grew in two different directions. You wanted to go right, they wanted to go left. You went up, they went down. You stayed still, they moved on. It happens, but you outgrow friendships, and it's okay because some of these friendships are the very things that's stopping you from and blocking your destiny, and you got to cut them loose. Sometimes, man, old friends are just that. They're old friends. I got friends of mine, man, that I've been cool with since I was four years old. We got a group that I've been knowing since we were four. We've been friends over 60 years, man. Great brothers. Still love them and talk with them. But it's a lot of friends, man, that was in that little circle I don't fool with no more. But it's four of us that stayed close. But everybody else that I grew up with, they out, man. 
And now that you've tried to make a progressive move upward in your life, you can't afford to have them around you because things that you associate with wind up rubbing off on you. If you hang with people and all they do is drink, don't you know eventually you're going to take a sip? If you hang around with people and all they do is cheat on their spouse and you're the only one don't, eventually, man, you're going to wind up trying it. You The temptation going to rub off on you. You got to distance yourself, man. You got to get away from the peer pressure that's blocking your destiny. You got you, And another thing you got to stop doing, stop making excuses for people that ain't right. When somebody forewarns you about somebody in your life, stop making excuses for them. Well, you know, they just got out. Well, you know, they trying. They trying to do better. That ain't your job. Your job is to get to your destiny. Sometimes you have to distance yourself. Listen to me, y'all. The enemy's job is to keep you from your destiny. The devil wants to rob you of your destiny that God has for you. You got to wake up and be aware of the people you got surrounding you. And sometimes it's your family. I have said it time and time again. Everybody come with you, can't go with you. But you got to start paying attention to your environment, man. If you're hanging around people that ain't get, it ain't going where you want to go, you got to get away from them. Hey, l- listen to me. Somebody told me this. They said, hey, Steve, look at your friends who you spend the most time talking to. He said, now, nah, that's where you're going to be in five years. He said, because five years ain't nothing, man. He said, look at the people you're spending your time talking to and associate with, and that's where you're going to be in five years. And if the friends you're associating with and the family members you're hanging with ain't where you want to be, you got to get a new group, man. It's nothing wrong with it, but you got to stop allowing people to block your destiny. You know, look, and, I, and well, well, Steve, I don't want them to not like me. Okay. You don't want nobody to like you. So you would rather not reach your destiny. I would rather you quit liking me than me not ever reaching my destiny. I'll tell you that. Because if me reaching my destiny is predicated on whether you like me or not, uh, I don't think that's a good friendship anyway. Be careful, y'all. And another thing, there's greatness in your future. Stop asking people to vote on it. There is greatness in your future. Stop asking people to vote on it. You and God are the majority. What anybody else thinks don't matter. Stop asking people for their permission for you to be great. Go reach your destiny and stop hanging around people that's blocking you. Those are my closing remarks. Get away from them. I'm telling you, get away from them. Y'all have a great day out there, man. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 